thank you, Mr. Chairman, for giving me the, the privilege of going first. I, I apologize. After I question, I'm going to have to go over to Commerce. We're working on a, the Endless Frontiers Act, which is... Um, endless. Endless. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way of putting it. So I'm going to start with you, Ms. Fox. Uh, we talked about... Um, uh, this issue on waters of the U.S. Um, and it, and you, you've all pledged clarity and thoughtfulness and regulatory certainty. Administrator Regan committed to not going back to the verbatim reading of the 2015 Obama waters of the U.S. rule. This is a very far-reaching rule that impacts a, a, a lot of uh, people, a lot of agriculture as well. But he hasn't provided much detail on this. So I'm wondering, in your opinion, do you believe that the 2015 rule was overreaching? What would your plans be to ensure we do not, we do not return to that overreaching dis definition, which I obviously believe that it was? And also, do you agree or disagree with the court decision, in, including the injunctions against the rule that were issued in uh, 2015? Um, thank you, Senator Capito, for the question, and also thank you for the opportunity to visit with you recently on so many of the issues before the Office mm -hmm. of Water, and I really look forward to accomplishing great things uh, with you and your office, if confirmed. Um, so on the question of waters of the U.S., you know, this is, of course, one of the most foundational um, components of the work before the Office of Water because it sets the foundation for how we protect our lakes, our rivers, our oceans, our wetlands. Um, we are in the process of, of reviewing um, the Navigable Waters Protection Rule and really under administrators, uh, Administrator Regan's uh, direction, we're really trying to understand what are the lessons learned from an implementation perspective on, on both the 2015 rule and the 2020 rule. You asked about how we're going to approach um, that review and that consideration, and it will really be, as Administrator Regan has said, to listen to all sides, to understand what is working, what is not working from an implementation perspective from the agricultural community, from industry, from environmental organizations, um, as well as our co-regulators, the states and tribes. Uh, based on that feedback and really uh, based on the science uh, and the economic analysis, uh, we'll make a determination moving forward. But, um, but uh, what I can say, Senator Capodo, is that you know, Administrator Regan and I want an enduring definition of waters of the U.S., um, one that uh, can, can withstand administration changes, uh, can protect our waters, and ensure the economic vitality of all communities. So that is our commitment um, as we do this review. Yeah, I mean, I would implore you again, as I think uh, a lot of folks who opposed the direction that the Obama administration went, that we don't go down that path again. Obviously, the courts agreed with, with that um, presumption and uh, caused a lot of confusion at the same time. Um, Ms. Estenos, I wanted to ask you about NEPA. Uh, just recently, Secretary Hallen signed uh, secretarial orders that directed the DOI to ignore and to not follow the common sense reforms to the implementation of NEPA. We hear about this from everybody in terms of how long it takes to get things approved, how long the process is, how lengthy and, and expensive it is, and, and, and we still are, are having issues. So uh, did you play any role in advising the secretary in the NEPA implementation decision, and are there elements of the Trump administration's NEPA reforms that you could, you could support? Thank, thank so you. The first Sen question is, did you play any role in them? Thank you, in Senator those. Capito. I, I was not directly involved in the development of the NEPA recomm recommendations, but as part of the DOI leadership team um, during these first 112 days. Um, I paid close attention. Uh, obviously, the two bureaus that I've been managing, this is a very important issue for them. I think the secretary's um, uh, goal here is to make sure that our environmental reviews are thorough, but also timely and efficient. And I think it's very important that that balance uh, be struck. Um, we are reviewing the procedures and policies the previous administration had in place, and, and the elements of it that work, I, I fully expect that we will uh, continue those and uh, refine those that, that need to be refined to, to achieve the right balance between thoroughness and timeliness. I, in my career, 
I have been on all sides of NEPA, so I've been a customer of waiting for a NEPA to be finished, and then I've been involved in, in the development of them. So I'm sensitive to um, how long those uh, analyses can take. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, um, I think it's finding that right balance between making sure that they're thorough. It's an important um, uh, bedrock of of our of the way that government implements programs and, and uh, projects and then doing it in a way that's efficient and um, transparent and accessible uh, to those, um, to b the public and to sort of our customer base for uh, right. projects well, and programs. As we look to the big surface transportation bill that we're working on, this is obviously a critical aspect of this. And I would encourage you to take that practical experience that you bring uh, in terms of length and time without uh, skirting any environmental regulations into consideration. And just lastly, I would ask you. You're, you're welcome to spend. You don't have to take another question. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, uh, the new national park in, in West Virginia, since you'll have oversight over some of, uh, oversight over the National Guards, I just wanted to get it, our national parks, uh, get a, a reassurance, number one, that you would come and visit our brand new, uh, where he learned to fish with his uh, father and grandfather, mm -hmm. and uh, a, a really special place. So uh, a commitment that that new park will be able to uh, get the, the, the infrastructure that's needed with the increased um, um, visitorship that we're already seeing. Senator, um, let me say that I, my husband, and our two, at the time, very young children spent a magical summer vacation at New River Gorge, one of the most magnificent places in our country. And for a, a Florida girl where we measure topography in inches, mm -hmm. it was a, really a staggering and profoundly um, impactful experience for me. It is really one of my favorite places. And so uh, you can count on me uh, if I am confirmed to, um, you know, to make sure that the National Park Service has what they need to um, make the most of, of that. And I want to congratulate you and Senator Manchin on, on that. On that well, uh, we'll wonderful. have to clip that and put that out around the country. <laughs> That's a great, <laughs> a great advertisement for a beautiful spot. Yeah. So last question, uh, Dr. Uh, Friedhoff, on the PFAS issue. Um, uh, you know that this is something that I'm deeply committed to, and you mentioned in your opening statement. Do you feel like there is a scientific gap uh, between the tools uh, of, that EPA needs to decide whether or not to regulate? I mean, it seems like it's taken so long in some ways. Is that because there's a, a gap in tools and a gap of um, certifiable data that can be used to, to move forward? Thanks very much for that question, Senator. I, I, I know how important the issue is to you and to so many members of the committee as well. And I know that there is sometimes a disconnect between the urgency that people expect the agency to be able to act with and the urgency that we actually act right. on. Because, and part of the, the reason for that are the research gaps that you're talking about. You know, one of the one of the provisions that was in this committee's PFAS legislation were, was language directing EPA's Office of Research and Development to come up with a way to prioritize PFAS so that we could, so that the agency will be able to focus its research and monitoring efforts a little bit more strategically. And in my office, if I'm confirmed, there's a few different efforts that we've been working on that will help complement that. So first is the toxic release inventory language mm -hmm. that, that you co-authored, which will, which will give us information about which PFAS are still being released into the environment. A second is a proposed rule that is at OMB uh, that will require manufacturers who made PFAS to tell us what they made, how much they made, and what it was used for. And that will give us a snapshot of what's in commerce, mm -hmm. and that will also be able to inform our research efforts and monitoring and regulatory efforts as well. And then finally, just a couple of weeks ago, we announced a policy that is designed to prevent unsafe new PFAS from entering commerce. And that'll prevent future problems that will cause us to play catch up again as well. I appreciate that. Thank, thank you so much. Yep, Out of run. Yeah, you bet.